GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. Oh, hell yeah, this is Stone Cold Steve Austin, and you are listening to the greatest fantasy football podcast known to man. This is the Fantasy Football Bros Podcast, and if you like what Chaz and Jay are giving you, give me a hell yeah. Here we go, here we go, here we go. You are now listening to the Fantasy Football Bros Podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chaz. And we have a very special Fantasy Football Bros podcast today. We are recording remotely because of the uh, seven feet or so of snow that the Buffalo area got. So if everything fucks up because of this remote recording, just blame it on Adam. That's all I got to say. But with me to my my virtual left, we have got... The man, the myth, the legend, Jay Coleman. Jay Coleman, what's going on, homie? How are you? Yo, what's up? How much snow do you got? Because you're in the midst of it with me here in Lackawanna. Uh, Like four plus feet. I would say, yeah, like five almost here in Lackawanna. We we didn't get it as bad as a few places. Uh, Yeah, I'm up in Hamburg. You're up in Hamburg, so you probably got a little worse. I got every inch of that six feet that they predicted so adam got a pretty i mean uh wait what's your name it doesn't matter what your name is adam Adam van houten's here buried in snow (laughs) what's up adam yeah what's going on guys so we are all buried and we all had a few snow days um i had two snow days but uh jay did you get how many snow days did you get i got one you got one adam I had one as well. Yeah, I had two because I work Friday, Saturday, and there was no getting out. I I work Friday. Well, I tried to go to work Friday. Didn't work out. Well, <laughs> I was completely buried. Well, thanks to actually, we got to give props to like the local weatherman because they did a good job. Um, they, I remember them saying that the storm is going to start hitting around 7 p.m. on Thursday, and then they change it to 8 p.m. I closed up shop at work at 7 p.m. And got home, and literally by 8 o'clock, it was coming down in buckets. Yep. And it did not stop snowing, literally, from 7 or 8 p.m. on Thursday till about, like, 6 a.m. Sunday. Yeah, that sounds about right. And Yeah, pretty much. And then, obviously, all you football fans know that the uh, the Bills game got moved and uh, was played in Detroit. Um None of us went. <laughs> no. I couldn't even get out of my driveway. Uh, yeah, um, especially at that point, there was no way I, I could get out. I just I got unburied today. We had to go out and buy a snowblower because we needed one anyway, so I'm happy we got that. You know, it would have been nice, though. You guys heard my complaints before if I had my, you know, big-ass Ram truck, but no, she's still in the shop. So, But, hey, I give the Durango props once it, once uh, once we yeah, snowblow, we got right out. Too. Yeah, it's, that should be totally fine in the snow. Except it's only about five inches from the ground where my truck is about... A foot and a half from the ground. That's why I love having my Jeep. You're a little higher than the Durango, but the truck, you know what I'm saying? The truck is ridiculously high, so. Yeah, I mean, I got you some... need to put a lift on your Jeep. <laughs> I mean, my Jeep's pretty high off the ground right now. It is pretty high. It is pretty high, so. It could be higher. <laughs> Probably could be. Oh, man. Maybe next year. What? Oh, I'm so high right now. Sorry, I just. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. Okay, so, um,. Well, let's just get started where we always start. How about them bills, baby? Let's go. Okay, so how about them bills, yo? They uh, went and got a big, big win against... A much-needed win. Yeah, a much-needed win against... um, the, the kind of team that everybody said would beat us. We went up against a running, stop the run team, and we happened to run down their fucking throats. Yes, we did. It was really good to see our, our run game with our running backs actually get going and and 
not rely on Josh Allen as much. No, Josh Allen had a, had a had a pedestrian game at best, and and yeah, he he really did. Jay, tell yeah, me about a, them running backs. How did they do? Uh, it was a great game for James Cook. Well, for both, I mean, James Cook and Singletary both had eighty six yards. Yeah, it was not, it was nice to see Cook though. Well, yeah, it, and I mentioned this in the Coffee with Chaz segment. It kind of it seems like. You know, this is the game you needed for James Cook to be like, all right, man, maybe maybe in a few weeks it will be more like 1A to 1B. Yeah, exactly. What? I think that was the hope from the beginning. Yes, yes, completely. Well, I so, wanted it to be Singletary 1A and James Cook 1B for the whole year. Uh, he's sure. a rookie. He doesn't got to be a starter, but he can make his way to the, too close to being a starter and not resign Singletary next year. And now yeah. you have your well, chance. I think we all know that Cook is probably going to be the starter next season. The only problem with that is he's a smaller guy. Where, where I, I know Singletary is a smaller guy too, but Singletary is like, I don't know. He looks seems durable and beefy and just Cook seems just a little more frail. But I mean, he's still a kid. What is he, 21 years old? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, something like that. So I mean, he'll definitely. He had a great on, game. He had a great game. He he looked explosive. Singletary looks better great and game. better every time I see him. Yeah, he's got excellent vision. He finds the hole. He hits it hard, just like me. Hey, oh, and he <laughs> he, uh, he he hits the hole hard. And he there's gets, a reason why he's single. <laughs> single Terry. That's right. And he gets about four <laughs> or five yards of carry, and that's exactly what you want from your running back. And and like. And and then so it's like it was like that perfect mix of like you know the Giants back in the day with with Ron Dane and Tiki Barber used to call it thunder and lightning. Ron Dane would pound and pound and pound, and then Tiki would hit a big one. That's kind of what happened with Singletary and Cook on 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 Sunday. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, li- I like the way he ran. I mean, he was. I, I said it earlier on. Um, I forget what episode it was. It was a while ago how smooth he is when he runs when he when he was hitting those holes and turning those corners man he just he just it looked effortless to him yeah and, effort, and effortless is he had some really so good smooth. gains yeah he and he just seems like he's getting he's get, he seems like he's getting it he, he was a rookie but um I, i'm going to pose this question to jay jay um how useless is uh isaiah mckenzie uh, very useless. I mean, the dude's not even returning punts and kicks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. I mean, there's no reason for him on his team, but everyone loves him, so we got to keep him. I, I'm going to tell you guys right now, and I'm going to tell you all you guys at home, um, watch out. Because of the next week or two, I'm pretty sure we can get Jamison Crowder to return from IR if his ankle's healed up, and that's going to be it for Isaiah McKenzie, I think. Uh, I don't know if I want to go there yet. Why wouldn't you want to go there yet? Jamison Crowder has a history of being one of the better slot receivers in the league, and we're not ready to go there over a useless Isaiah McKenzie? I don't disagree. I just don't think the Bills will do that yet. I think they will because he's useless. And they didn't even give him – did he even have a reception? I know he had that failed two-point attempt. Did he have a reception yesterday? I don't even think he did. Mm, I don't think he did. So I think he had some targets but never came down with a catch. We had another another brutal drop from Gabe Davis. Mackenzie got smoked on that two-pointer. No chance. You know, my thing about that – what. Why did they think that that was going to work? Anytime when McKenzie goes in motion, it's just, oh, guess who's getting the ball? You're right, exactly. It's sweet. As soon as I seen him going on motion, I had a double take because it was one of two things. It was either going to be that jet sweep for McKenzie, or if that was Gabe Davis, it was going to be the QB lean up the yeah. middle. And I was like, oh, nope, it, oh, it's there it is. Oh, and he stopped. Like, why not do that play with James Cook or do that play with Naheem Hines? You know, my thing, too, is McKenzie, like, he just needed to make a cut and go up the field. He ran the entire sideline. (laughs) I don't know. The the thing with McKenzie is he always tries to do too much. When he does does catch the ball, it's just like. He's a tryer. 
Yeah, just take it. We, he he's your he's your per, he's your jet sweep and your screen guy. But like, come on, that's we need to be better than that. Yeah, on all the screens that we don't run. Oh, oh my god, I there was that one. There was one drive where the Bills ran three consecutive screens, and I was about to give up on fantasy fo- or football in general. <laughs> three screens in a row. One screen to James Cook where. He, he didn't. He, Josh overthrew him. The next screen to James Cook, where Josh underthrew him, and the next screen to uh, Dawson Knox, and Dawson Knox ended up getting the first down. Yeah, I went through a lot of emotions in that game, oh. especially in the beginning. If you could see the group text, folks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was brutal. And I don't even be just ours. I mean, the one that me, me and Jay have with all yeah, our just other just buddies. General. Ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So Jay, yeah. so Jay, you you feel. Do you feel comfortable as a manager? Well, you've been doing it anyway, but do you feel more comfortable now rolling with James Cook in your starting lineup? Uh, yeah, probably. Like, unfortunately for think- Jade, it's like his number RB two. But I don't think yeah. I think you could do a lot worse in your flex than James Cook yeah, right definitely. now. Definitely. I would give him flex consideration. He's got flex appeal. That's what we say. He does. Uh, I just, I just can't. You can't guarantee that it's going to be that every week. No, but it's the same. Well, how is that any different from Gabe Davis? Mm. Gabe Davis has been pretty good the past couple weeks. I'll give him that. But when it comes to his catching ability, that's all I got to say. He's had he's struggled um, a lot this year, and, and he almost blew Gabe that two Davis point that, conversion. That uh, I, I pointed this out to somebody at work today, and. Um, Basically, what happened is there was no pressure on Gabe Davis last year. He wasn't the number two in Buffalo yet. He was, you know, just a guy that was out there trying to prove himself. And then this year, boom, he's the number two. And he gets a, gets a case of the dropsies, has had an underwhelming season. And I don't know, that's the, I think it was just getting thrown into that number two role. <laughs> He's not a number two receiver in this NFL, and, and uh, like he's a good like he's like I think he'd be a good third or fourth guy, and, and I think he'd be a good like number two replacement. Like if your number two went down, you know, yeah. for a couple weeks, and he had to come in, like he'd be fine. But he's just he's not he's just not there for me, and, and like. I know, like, it seems like that old Al Beckham thing is, is, is going away and going away and going away. So, like, not a good chance. But, like, I want to see um, some more of Shakir, and I want to see Jamison Crowder come back. I really do. I definitely want to see more of Shakir. But did, again, you didn't see yeah, any same. of them. Yeah, he didn't, he, just, he didn't really run that many routes. But hey, we it's kind of disappointing. We won the game. We won the game by mm-hmm. running down their throats and shutting down their running game, and that's what everyone says we can't do. Yeah, it was good to see. It was, it was definitely a, a good change of pace. Now, but another. I think a lot of. The, do you think a lot of that had to do with Josh Allen struggling early? <sighs> and they were just like, you know what? Let's see what we could do running the ball. I, and it started to work, and they were like, stick with it. Maybe, um, maybe so. It, you, I mean, that's the lowest yards that we've seen Josh Allen have all season. But it's the highest rushing yards we've seen. So, Out so, of the entire team, yes. Yeah, so it, it, that's it, what I'm saying. Like, it, it goes hand Josh in hand. struggling early, does that make it did, – did, did they go, McDermott and Dorsey go, you know what, we got to change it up, run the ball. So if, J, so if, if Josh is struggling – Obviously, in the past few games, what is it? His elbow, or is it his his mind? Because hey, I'm not dunking on him for throwing red zone interception. Because guess what? He didn't finally. Yeah, I think it's both. Yeah, I think it's more of a mental thing than the elbow thing. Because he he been through. He threw some good balls. It's just something about him is just off. Yo, that touchdown. I think it's mental. That touchdown he threw to. Um, that looked it, awkward, right? It looked weird. It looked like he had to put. He, he, it looked like when like Tua launches a ball, like he had to put everything into <laughs> His it. Entire body into it. Yeah, that's what it looked like. That. Yeah, we're I, not used to see Josh doing that. Right. That's not right. Like, I, 
it, it was it scared me. Do you, do do you know what we're talking about, Jay? No, I didn't see it. So so if you watch a replay of it, if you can find a replay where you just see Josh actually follow through, dude, he like put everything he had into that fourteen yard throw where he almost did a front flip. Because he had to put everything in. Into, so I don't know if he needed to do that to generate the power or he was just so, like, amped up to, like, break the red zone touchdown drought. Yeah. I think it might have, it could have been a little bit of both, but I don't know. It, it did. It just looked weird. He looked, he did the just twisting body throw and it was just weird. Yeah, it was, it was, it was scary looking and I was nervous for a second, but then he comes out the first drive of the second half. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, all right. Right. <laughs> all right. He's back. <laughs> so it's, it's good to see because, you know, you need to get the run game going in the colder months. And guess what? It's cold. Yeah, it's very cold. So that's what you need. And that, that's what I'm happy to see. Um, Another thing I want to bring up and talk before we get into our segments is, do you guys know what this song is? Do you know what that means? No. Uh, Diaz is coming out to save the game for the Mets? No, that means, oh. that that's calling. That's the Green Ranger calling on Dragon Zord, so I want to yeah. throw out rest in peace to Jason David Jason Frank, David Frank. Oh, my yeah. favorite of all the Power Rangers. I mean... He's a- Everybody's favorite. Well, possibly. I, I, he, was, he was certainly mine. Well, we'll, we'll go. We'll, we'll give uh, you know a little bit of uh, our JDF memories. Uh, so po- Power Rangers, you know, as the eldest one of this crew, um, Power Rangers came out what like ninety three, ninety four, ninety three, I think. So I was seven in ninety three, and uh, it was, I was four. It was the fur. It, it was literally must see television for me that whole first and second year, and like mm. I would run home from school to put it on and watch it every week. And I and I don't do that. And like he, the Green Ranger wasn't there right away, and then he, you know, showed up. You know, ten so episodes in, and and my first crush was the Pink Ranger, Kimberly. Even before Topanga Lawrence, it was Kimberly, and. Yes, of course. Uh, and then it was like, you know, looking back at now, I had a total man crush on Tommy Oliver, on, on Jason David Frank. And, you know, I had long hair growing up as a kid. And, and I, have a, I have a Green Ranger uh, ornament on my tree right now. And uh, on my Christmas tree. Yes, my Christmas tree's up. Fuck all y'all who want to say shit. Shut up. <laughs> but there's a there's a Green Ranger ornament on there. And, uh, yeah, man, it, it hit me. It hit me hard. I, it was my favorite. You know, it was my favorite. Growing up as a kid, I had all his toys and everything, and I know he's been doing like the um, the uh, comic cons and shit, and, and I, I go to those here and there, and I never had a chance to meet him, and you know it sucks. It sucks for for that. It hit me more than I thought it would. So I just want to say rest in peace to JDF. And uh, what are your memories of the Green Ranger, Adam? Um, he was always my favorite. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit younger than you, Chaz, but I still remember Power Rangers, man. That was that was my show. You know, I think I dressed up as the Red Ranger for I don't know three, four Chris, uh, Halloweens in a row, and Christmases too. It was and a little weird. But... Um, I mean, yeah, dude. It, the thing about the Green Ranger too is he was he was the bad guy in the beginning. Yep, and then he turns into the good guy, and I. I always loved the Power Rangers movie. That was like my biggest memory of, of the Power Rangers is, is that Power Rangers movie that came out. That's funny because that was right about the time that I was getting so out that, of it. That's what I have to say about that. And then, and then Jay, what do you got? You got any memories of the Power Rangers or anything? I mean, I do, but like nothing specific. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it, did, it doesn't hit everybody, but the people that were into it, man, that, that hurt me when I heard that. I was into the Power Rangers. Well, well, you're about, you guys are the same age, right? You two, I think, just about. Yeah, yeah, I'm 33. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, so, so that I mean, you know, that makes sense. I, I, fe- I feel, I just feel like, for that generation, from like people that are like, we'll say like 38 to people that are like 30, man, it was a big deal. Right. To to, yeah, to all sure. of us. So like, rest in peace, JDF. I heard it was a pretty sad way to go. I heard it was suicide. So that sucks. So if you guys are feeling that way, talk to somebody. That's all. Yeah, definitely. There's all kinds of helplines, and there's always somebody out there who 
who is more than willing to help. Yeah, talk to somebody. It shouldn't have to go to that. And, um, well, rest in peace, JDF. And, uh, and we'll get on to one of our segments now, and we will start with... Oh, man. What? I'm so high right now. I have no idea what's going on. And I am so high right now. Jay, what 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 you doing over there? What you high on, buddy? I'm going with uh, Zach Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go yeah, on. Go that's on. That's great. I mean, I don't know how you can say you didn't let the defense down oh. when you had more punts than completion. <laughs> he was very bad. Yeah, and he and he straight up said no when they asked him. Like literally, that's all he said was no. The, the question was, do you feel that you let the defense down? And he said no. No. <laughs> yeah, straight up, like he didn't even think about it or didn't, anything. He was just didn't no. hesitate. Didn't even elaborate. Just no. no. Hey, hey, Zach, Zach, Zach Wilson, um, did you let your uh, defense down? No. Okay. Zach, hey, uh, uh, Zach, Zach Wilson, uh, do you know uh, who Elijah Moore is? No. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Zach, Will- Zach Wilson, uh, do you want to throw a few slant passes to Michael Carter? No. Oh, okay. okay. Hey, Zach Wilson, did I see you running out of my mother's bedroom last night? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Zach. Are you sure? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I don't that know. That was um, that was a tough one. That was three three. The entire game. Yeah, t- and then right at the and end, how ironic! The stupid that, New England defense says, yeah, "Nah, bro. bruh," and just nope. ruins yeah, it for a little, everybody. Little return for a touchdown there. Unreal. You guys want to hear even something worse? The Buffalo Bills lost to Zach Wilson. That's true. That's unfortunate because yeah, that guy is not good. Jay, is uh, is Zach Wilson a bust? No. <laughs> I don't think we know. I yeah, think I mean, it's getting close. According to... It, it's definitely getting close. According to the Jets organization, they're riding high. No, some. I read a report today. I know that's what they said, but I read a report today that yeah. he didn't agree to Zach being the starter next week. Yep. I heard I, that, and I also read that after that press conference, a lot of the players in the locker room were kind of like... What? Yeah. What do you mean it's not your fault? Yeah, so here's <laughs> what I have to say about it. It, go- it goes back to what I've said before. Like, QBs not taking accountability. Like, Josh Allen played like shit last week. He admitted to it. <laughs> Zach-, Zach Wilson plays like shit. And he's like, no, no. I'm good. I didn't <laughs> let the defense down. Not my fault. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right. So you're right. You're not a franchise QB, in my opinion, if you can't take accountability. You're 100. That's right. the key. That's the key word is accountability. Well, you know, like we rag on, we rag on, uh, we we rag on Aaron Rodgers a lot, and like for being no accountability and all that stuff. But there's a difference. Aaron Rodgers is, what, a three-time NFL MVP, Super Bowl winner, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. He's not fucking Zach Wilson. No. Yeah. So, like, Aaron can get away with shit like that, where Zach Wilson has not allowed himself any leeway like that whatsoever. I agree. All right. Well, um, I'll take I'll take it up next. And for the I'm so high right now for me, it's... Feel so good! Justin Fields... <laughs> Two times yesterday, so high, he throws one ball, and it hits a defender in the head. No, whatever. <laughs> it happens. But he brush it off your shoulder. Don't hurt your shoulder. Okay, you hurt your shoulder. But Too late. brushes it off, you know, goes and runs a bunch, and then there's this play. And I'm not even exaggerating. 
He steps back in the pocket. He's, you know, bouncing, looking, looking. He launches back as hard as he can to throw the ball down the middle of the field. And he hits his fucking center in the head so hard with nobody around this guy. The center wasn't even engaged. Maybe it was the guard. Wasn't even engaged with anybody. So hard that if you watch the center's face and reactions, it looked like he got hit by a sniper. He, like, ducked and turned around like, what? the fuck was that uh, it was one of the funniest things i've ever seen in the nfl i don't even know how that could happen because justin fields is a big guy it's not like he's short trying to throw over these dudes he was only about three feet away from this guy it must have hit him about 50 miles an hour with this football <laughs> well we all know he can't throw oh he's horrendous at throwing the football but like i have no, did you guys see injury. the play that i'm talking about i saw it it, it, am I am I exaggerating whatsoever, Adam? Oh no, it's it was pretty bad. <laughs> I went back and looked at it because I was just like, "Is this even possible?" <laughs> yeah, no, he <laughs> rifled it. At there was no, but <laughs> he wasn't even engaged blocking anybody because there's nobody around him. Yeah, it, it was absurd. He's not a good thrower to football. He is no. a fantastic runner of the football, but now he's sure. hurt. But he hurt his shoulder. Right. So I guess we'll see how much that really affects his game. He's just going to run more. <sighs> I mean, he's. I've said it for the longest time. I mean, we made that trade for him. I said, I'm going to enjoy these two good weeks, and then it's probably going to be touch and go between Fields and, and Aaron Rodgers, and I'm holding to that. So. Well, good thing you didn't start Aaron Rodgers this week. He was fine. He had 20-something points. Fields had like no, 26. He okay. yeah. Fields didn't have his major game. Rodgers played okay, but he still kind of sucks. Yeah, he's, <laughs> well, he's been not good. Well, Adam, what are you getting high on? Uh, I'm getting high on Packers fans calling for Jordan Love to come in. And as much as we rag on, on Aaron Rodgers, do you, if you really, really think that Jordan Love is your best chance to win games, you are absolutely you are higher than high. I still think Aaron Rodgers is your best chance to win football games. So so cut the shit and get out of here with this notion of bench Rodgers. But first of all, you can't bench a guy making fifty million dollars a year. Unlimited. <laughs> uh I'm not even getting high on him this week. <laughs> Jesus. That's crazy. But all these Packers fans out there and, and I'm friends with a lot of not friends, but I follow a lot on Social media. They're super cool people. But, um, there's just, I, Packer fans are calling for Jordan Love, and I just don't understand it. Aaron Rodgers still gives you the best chance to win. Yes. Cry baby or not. But, like, this was your first round pick in 2020. We're about to be in the 2023 season. So, like, I know. What? Is this guy just going to be like never going to get his chance? And he, he's probably going to be up for free agency next year. Here's the thing. I don't think that they expected Aaron Rodgers to be around anymore. I think they kind of expected him to retire. Are you watching this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's time for him. I don't think it ever will be. Uh, well, apparently not. you got to remember, he was drafted like the same year. Uh, of uh, Joe Burrow, so like, no. <laughs> he, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's it doesn't matter. He's yeah, I, or no, was it or even earlier? Was it two his year? Either either way, like, geez, like, wait, that's the same year. Never mind. <laughs> so yes, it was two his year. Uh, in case you guys are wondering, uh, Devo Samuel just ran for forty yards. Well, I was actually, yeah. I mean, people are going to be hearing this, obviously. Uh, you know, after the fact, but I was just looking up some stats because I'm not watching the game because I got too much going on here. But right now, after all my ranting last week, apparently um, Kyle Shanahan listened to me because Elijah Mitchell has four rushing attempts in the first half, a little more, and um, and Christian McCaffrey um, has uh, six rushing attempts, but five receptions. <laughs> But he yeah, had some. It's, um, it's the same. It's just about the same amount. Like, come on. Yeah, he was just in for that last drive, and then they just ran it with Debo. So, 
Well, that's probably the better option <laughs> than Elijah Mitchell. <laughs> well, Eli- Elijah Mitchell's not terrible, but I don't know. I'm just so it was there. a 40-yard run, so. Yeah, he, d- I like Debo. He's been kind of having a quiet year, too. <laughs> he kind of has. I know this for a fact because he's on my team. That's true. Um, all right, guys. Which, let's, I beat the hell out of Cousins to Jefferson this week. Well, good, and I beat the hell out of, uh, well, it's not over yet, but Jay's brother. Uh, Jay, how did you do this week? Not good. Ooh. So did you guys see the cock block move I did? In, in, in my game? I'm guessing not. No. Adam, no, you didn't see my cock block? Uh, I have no idea. Okay, so, and if I'm wrong, if you guys say I'm wrong for this, I'm wrong for this, but I think it's fair game. So, uh, we're playing, I'm playing Jay's brother, and uh, I pretty much blowed him, blowed him out, not blowed him, blowing him out, but like, I have scored, right now I have 143 with Christian McCaffrey still, and he's got 97. So pretty much blowing him out, but going in, he has... Kyler Murray as in his in his starting lineup and oh, did you pick up Colt McCoy? I picked up Colt McCoy. Oh, you're such a whore. Is that yeah, is that you're wrong? Such a dick. That's a huge. Yeah. That's a dick move. No, well, it's it's this is tooth and nail fighting, but at the same it's, time, he would it would strategy and strategic. Colt McCoy wouldn't would need give him a chance. Colt McCoy would need. Yeah, that's fucked up. Colt McCoy would need about fifty eight points to beat me. Anything's and, possible, but at least give him a chance. I, he had all week to pick him up. I mean, that's true. I I picked him up this morning. <sighs> Listen, I'm all I'm all in favor for fantasy managers being fantasy managers. Okay, if you want to play fantasy football, pay attention, do your research, do what you got to do to to be the best you can. Right? You're right. All week, it's Monday Night Football. It's literally the last game of the week. If you have an inkling that your starting quarterback is going to be out, pick up his backup. Yeah. So, is it a dick move? Sure, but it's strategy. I, I don't. I don't call, think it's a and dick the, move because the if, only thing, the only reason why I think it's a dick move is because there's no way that Colt McCoy would have helped him win. Well, this is why I don't think it's a dick move because if there's a running back in flux and somebody picks up the second string running back or the second string receivers, no one's going to say a word. Well, it, it's the same thing though. I, I, I would, I would think it's a dick move if it's game day. You know, a lot of people drafted Tony Pollard, Alexander Madison, you know, guys like that. But I don't know. I, I, like I said, I think it's a dick move only because there's no chance that he would have got that many points. I, I don't think it's a dick I move. I would have gave him a chance. What I think is a dick <laughs> move is I remember in one league, and this, now this is a dick move and I wouldn't stand for something like this. I remember in one league, I, I want to say it was a kicker. Uh, some guy's kicker had an injury and he didn't change it. So what somebody did is he, they went in and, and it was free, it was free waivers. They picked up every kicker and released every kicker. So therefore every kicker was on waivers. Okay. And that is a dick that's move. That's a dick move. That's a hundred percent a dick move. That would never be allowed. Should never be allowed. Yeah. And that, and that shouldn't be allowed. I, I agree. But I don't think what I did is, is considered like illegal or something like that. No, I don't think it's illegal. Where, where that other move is illegal, so definitely. I don't know. Why, so, why am I a dick, Jay? I, I know, I know. Yahoo prevents that from happening. If you pick somebody up, you if you hold them for twenty four hours, then they go on waivers. Oh, okay. If you if you pick up and release them, they're still available to be picked up free agent wise. Oh, okay. Well, that's smart. Yeah. So I think that's like something built in that Yahoo did. But why do you think I'm a dick, Jay? Uh, you just are. <laughs> that's, the, that's the most honest answer we've heard all day. Well, boys, yes, gas up your cars. Time for a victory lap. I'm going to start this one. I'm taking a victory lap, not for myself, for a player that I do possess. Uh, but the victory lap is going to be on Cordero Patterson for breaking the NFL record for most kickoff return touchdowns of all time with nine. On 106 or something kickoff return touchdown at the age of like 33. This man burnt by everybody. Just straight down the field, burnt by everybody. 
Correll Patterson, you are the NFL's all-time leading kickoff returner. I always say it. He's one of my favorite players in the NFL. So it was very happy to see that. And I didn't even know this was a thing. I got the points for the, that six, uh, that, that touchdown, not the yards, but I got his points for the touchdown. So yeah, I think that's also built into Yahoo and their standard scoring. You won't get the return yards, but you'll get the touchdown. So player. now say, here, here's what I don't know. But then, if I got the six from Cordell Patterson, does the defense get the six yes. too? So that's cool. So I could have got a double yes. touchdown if you I was. If you would, if you would have started um, the Falcons defense special teams, it would have counted for both. Now the Cordell cra- Patterson would have got the six and the defense as well. Now the craziest thing about six. it is that that never enters my mind, and it shouldn't because not many major players kick you know, our kickoff returners anymore, but neither is Cordell Patterson. He's not their kickoff returner. So I was surprised to see him back there. A lot of the times it's a defensive player too. So very rarely do you get an offensive player that is returning kicks. Yeah. So I was very happy to see that for him as one of my, as one of my favorite players of all, of all time, of all time. And um, that's awesome. So take your victory lab, Cordell Patterson. Jay, did you see the kickoff return? Yeah, I did. Dude, that dude still got some jets, huh? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he split. He outran the entire defense. He split so. those two guys Special at the teams. end of it. Yep. You know, and he played for his old ass. I know he's an old ass a, man. He's like your age. Yeah, it, was, it was a great run. Love him. Love him. And he ended up almost getting another, a rushing touchdown in the same game. He got stopped on like the three yard line. So Cordell Patterson, congratulations, uh, Adam. What is your victory lap? My victory lap ties in with Jay's. I'm so high. About Zach Zach Wilson. <laughs> My victory lap goes out to the quarterbacks that take accountability for for their uh, their shitty performances. No, you know we've been <laughs> we've been saying it for weeks. You know Josh Allen does this all the time. He puts the team on his back. He he goes out there in press conferences and and yeah, you know what? I played like shit. You know, and a lot of other quarterbacks do that too, except for you know Aaron Rodgers <laughs> and uh, Zach Wilson. So. Um, my victory lap goes out to them. You know, the, the quarterback is the guy who touches the ball on every play. He's your leader of your team. Nine times out of ten, he's your captain. <laughs> uh, they don't do four hours worth of yoga on a plane. <laughs> uh, but my victory lap goes out to those guys. All those quarterbacks that will always, always, always take accountability for their pe- their performance on the field. You're right. It's called leadership. Lead, yep, yeah. exactly. E- no, that's, even that's when it's point. not really their fault, they'll still take accountability. Yeah. Yep, and that's what being a leader is. Yeah, I mean, as much as people want to hear it, Kermit the Frog here. He's the same way. Yep, I'm sure is. He, he, you know, he, he, I've I've heard him say that a million times. Well, not a million because he's rarely plays bad. But <laughs> another monster performance from uh, Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> yeah, I would know. All right, Jay, what are you all gassed up about? What's your victory lap? Uh, my victory lap is Najee Harris finally showing up to a football game. I'm he's still on your bench. No, he's in my starting lineup. Nice. 27 points. I know. I just traded Najee Harris in one of my leagues. I would like to acquire him, Jay, if you're getting rid of him. Not well, he's back. 27. Yeah. <laughs> he's back, baby. <laughs> yeah, he's back. I'm back. No. So tell me, tell me what you guys think about this trade. Um, in one of my leagues, I had an abundance of, of wide receivers, and I, I kind of still do. It, it didn't really help my cause. Um, I had Stephon Diggs, Mike Evans, Christian Kirk, and DeAndre Hopkins. That's an abundance. I traded Stephon Diggs and Najee Harris. To acquire Alvin Kamara and Amari Cooper. Nah, I don't like it. <laughs> well, I did it. I don't like that at all. I would rather have both of the players you got away gave away. I would rather have Najee than Kamara. Kamara's been gar bitch. Gar- Kamara has one good game on the year. That's okay. So does Najee Harris. Sure. His last week. But so so if you're gonna, if your guys has like two good games. Okay. But if you're gonna <laughs> guys okay. put them I as s- almost equals, you downgraded heavily from from Diggs to Cooper. 
Not this week. Okay, not this week because they played the shitty Bills defense. Not last week. Amari Cooper had two touchdowns last week, too. I don't know. I don't buy it. I think Amari Mar- Cooper is the most overweight rated wide receiver in the NFL. So, that, <laughs> well, that, Jacoby that, Brissett loves him. And he's done after this week. Right, we'll see. Yeah, okay. I needed um, I needed a better running back. You didn't and get one. <laughs> how, how, how are you going to sit there and tell me Najee Harris is better than Alvin Kamara? Have you watched the Saints play? It looks like the whole team is stuck in the mud. And actually, they played a good game this week. And Kamara Have you watched had, the Steelers play? Ro- but the steel, yeah, you're right. So they're almost even. I don't think you got a better running back in the situation. You got, you, I think you got somebody an equal, an equal. Okay, and if it's maybe a, a step better, but not with the way the Saints are using them, um, they do not throw them the ball anymore. And it just seems like, and I, I this is frustration for me because I have them in two other leagues. So you're talking to somebody that that has him. <laughs> <laughs> and like feels his pain, and I'll tell you right now, the two leagues that I have Alvin Kamara as my number two running back, or number one running back in the one, and number two in the other, I uh, have a total of like five wins between both teams. So like, he's a heartbreaker. You're gonna regret it. I don't know. Jay is actually has both running backs in the other league. <laughs> Those are Jay's <laughs> yes, two I running do. backs, and they're really not that far apart. Am I wrong? I mean, not really. Yeah. Kamara's points. I still think Kamara's better, but by a long shot, I don't know. It, it, it's it's like what what if not, if I had Kamara and somebody offered me Najee, would I make the trade? I would consider it just for the upside. Where I'm not seeing much more upside in Kamara anymore. I see plenty of upside in Kamara. I don't know. I, I, not with that, that offense. That offense needs him to roll. That team is in. A fucking shambles, shit show, man. That team is a shit show. But they won. They're coming off a win, right? Didn't they win? Um, I don't know if I they think, did. I think they won. And Andy Dalton was slinging it, but not to Kamara. He was slinging it to Olave. Yeah, he he spread the ball around. And Juwan Johnson. Juwan I, Johnson got uh, – Juwan Johnson, he's a strange one. He's got three games he's in a row three, with a TD. Three games in a row with a touchdown. Not many yards, but he's still there. I don't know. My so, you asked my opinion on that trade, and I gave it to you. I, I, feel, I didn't ask your opinion. I feel I was just telling you the trade. I feel like you, you said, "What do you guys think about this?" <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you you stepped up maybe slightly at running back, and you had a big downgrade at, at receiver. But we'll see. Well, we'll see how it pays off. I won this week. I didn't lose my matchup, so and, and here if I would have, it definitely wouldn't have been from Kamara. It would have been from Kirk Cousins getting me two points. And, and who knows if 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 Josh Allen is broken like we hope he's not, you know maybe Diggs is not going to play well. But Diggs has been pretty solid every game, so yeah, we'll see. Did did uh did everybody have their victory laps? Did you do it yesterday? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah you, did. you just did it too. I went last. Okay, well let's move on to Jay's favorite segment of. Dunked on, bro. And Adam, who are we dunking on? I have to dunk on Bills fans again, man. Oh. Every oh single boy. week with this shit. Oh boy. These guys, the, the Bills fans are just so on and off. We love this team. We hate this team. We love this team. We hate this team. Make up your fucking minds. Stop getting into this narrative that, oh, same old Bills. Yes, we've gone through some struggles. Guess what? We struggled the same stretch of games last year. Same same stretch. La- I believe last week was when we lost to the uh, Jaguars. That was horrific. We don't speak of that. Exactly. Urban like, Meyer's you know, only win. I see all these Bills fans going, oh, get rid of Dorsey. Get rid of McDermott. Well, this team sucks and blah, blah, blah. They, like, just relax. Chill out. And let us do our thing. I'm not far from getting rid of Dor- Dorsey, but. <laughs> I'm not either. I, listen, I'm not saying he's had some outstanding play calling, okay? Because the past few games he has not. But we're also not executing that play calling. which And that's the thing that the, the coach gets the most rap about is he calls a play. It doesn't look right. 
And it's immediately the coach's fault for calling that play. Don't get me wrong. Last week was terrible because that QB sneak on the, the one yard line was awful. And worst case scenario happened. But it, it, it comes down to the players playing and executing the plays that are called. So I, I don't like that, you know, people are like, oh, he's not calling great plays. He's not. Well, maybe he maybe he is, but it just looks bad because it didn't work. What I think is crazier is fans calling for Dorsey to be fired, but silent on fucking Leslie Frazier. Oh, I haven't been silent. I know you haven't, but like I've seen way more people shit on Dorsey, and it's like, yeah, are you are I you agree. guys watching this fucking defense? I mean, they haven't been great. I, also missing a lot of starters. Yeah, I, the defense only gets a break because they're missing a lot of people. But it's not about the personnel; it's about the lack of changing. He right. just yeah. never adjusts and never changes. And he didn't this past week. I mean, Mari Cooper is tearing us up, and we're stopping the run great, and we're ahead. So maybe we should switch things up and start stopping the pass. Right? Nah. Nope, <laughs> you're letting Amari Cooper tear us up. Maybe, maybe shade nah, some co- shade some coverage over to him and uh, not worry about Nick Chubb so much when they're down by 20 points. No. Okay. Okay, Leslie <laughs> Fraser. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just like I said, I, I'm not defending Dorsey at all, but I'm also not going to rip him apart for our terrible play on offense the last couple games that hasn't executed the plays called. It, it's, it's, it's also his don't, first don't get, year. Hey, so. listen, don't yeah, get me wrong. That two point conversion and that jet sweep with Isaiah, terrible play call. Okay, but Mackenzie could have done a better job. <laughs> so in, it goes both ways in life. It's true. So uh, I'm dunking on Bills fans. Just make up your minds. You, you love them or you hate them. Nah, nah bro. You, you can't be in between. <laughs> there's just there's just great that's how all Bills fans are. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm dunking on. It sounds like you're taking shots at Rico, uh <laughs> Jay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rico all all day. I'm calling you out, Rico. Just shits on the Bills during the game. And then at the end he's always like, guys, remember it's just a game. Don't get carried away. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, those people can't stand me. That's okay. Rico fucking dunked on me in our other league. Fucking Rico yeah, he did. He comes in you. fucking comes in with uh, Devontae Adams and Tony Pollard this week. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I fucking Rico dunked on me, and he deserves it. He deserves a little bit of victory lap, Rico. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. There's my get dunked on. Who's next? Jay, what you dunking on? Uh, I'm dunking on the Vikings. Hey. <laughs> You're so bad that CBS pulls your game. And Kirk sucks. Cousins got benched. And Kirk got benched. Yes, no he did. For him. Yes, he did. Do you think he was wearing chains on the... No, he wasn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> they took him away. That whole team was garbage. I mean, I mean, Dalvin Cook didn't have a good game. Where was no, Double J yeah. here again? No, he Double J was not here again. Double J here again? No. No. Yeah, no. Their, their whole team just garbage. What was the score? Forty to three. Forty to yeah, three. Some, yeah. Oh, I nah, remember. bruh. I debated on my my victory lap on uh, Tony Pollard. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness is right. Hey, shot. Hey. What a what a game! Credit to where it's due. Better than Zeke and and uh, Samaji P Ryan was better than uh, was Mixon. better than Mixon. Well, Mixon got and, hurt, and Mixon got hurt. But even before Mixon got hurt, P Ryan was killing it. He was. He absolutely was. Country music superstar Eric Van Houten had him in his lineup. <sighs> Didn't matter though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's because it's country music superstar Eric Van Houten, and uh, I'll be going to visit him this week. Going to Nashville, yes, sir. He's going to Nashville. I don't know how to make sausages. I don't know what goes into sausages. But he's. <laughs> I don't know why. I just wanted to hear that one. What about the Colts, by the way? Ugh. Right, they almost beat Philly. They almost. they played them tough. They they played sure. them tough. 
Eagles Matt, are frauds. Matt Ryan came in saying, I'm back. And then the eagle said, no. <laughs> Just, can you tell me what my new favorite sound drop is? Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. It's fantastic. It's a good it's a good sound drop. All right, you ready for my dunk? Yes. <laughs> Adam, what do you think it's gonna be? You know what I'm fired up on. Mm, is it still the Bengals? It's on Bumbles. Oh, Jamal Williams. Fucking Bumbles, Jamal That's Williams. Right, you mentioned that on your coffee with Chad. Oh, I am so over this fucking you, Detroit you Lions. Best running back in the league. <laughs> yeah, Literally the best running back in the league. Yep. Leads the league in touchdown. Oh yeah, great. Fantastic. With like Six hundred yards rushing. <laughs> Fantastic, the dude. Like DeAndre anytime. Swift too. Yeah, exactly. Like it's so <laughs> stupid. Bumbles gets to like the two, three yard line and somehow just finds his way in the end zone. He's not juking people. He's not running over people. He's not stiff He's arming people. He runs into his fucking lineman, falls over the right side, and gets into the end zone all the time. You, you'll you'll see a play baby. where Amon Ross and Brown gets to the one yard line, or Deron J. Swift makes a big run and gets stopped at the three, and here comes Bumbles. Boom. Bum, 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 and just he's done, and he gets and he gets the touchdown. He, you want to talk about a fraud, Adam? <laughs> that guy is fool's gold. Like fantasy football, I get it. He's getting you the points. He, he, great. I don't know. He's the best running back in the league. He's, he's not. Yeah, I guess so. If if, if touchdowns matter, Jesus Christ. Ugh, it, he's just so uninspiring of a player, and and not only the fact. And not only the fact that like he's doing what he's doing, the fact that the Lions are throwing Justin Jackson out there it, it has more carries than DeAndre Swift, but then DeAndre Swift still in his like minimal carries for like the third week in a row gets a fucking touchdown. Yeah, he ended up with that touchdown late. It's absurd. I don't understand and I cannot wrap my head around how he's not using him. And then and then all of a sudden, you know, he, he'll make a big play, and then you hear, and then you hear, Stop it! <laughs> Cut it out! I- there he comes, there comes Bumbles in to fall in the end zone and get the touchdown like, fuck. Yeah. Uh, I, I said this before. Uh, DeAndre Swift got hurt. He was he was fantastic. He got hurt last year on Thanksgiving, and then his season was kind of derailed. Hopefully, this Thanksgiving there's a there's a change because the Bills are going to crush them so hard that um, he has to uh, catch a lot of passes. But I can't believe it. I'm so shocked in the this this Jamal Williams situation. Yeah, it's it's a tough one, especially for where DeAndre Swift was being drafted. And where Jamal Williams is being drafted. It's just mind-blowing that they're just like, yeah, here you go. Mind-boggling, isn't it? Run for 80 yards to the one-yard line. Eh, we'll just put Williams in. Yeah, it, it's it's absurd. And I know J- Jay's trying to dunk on me for the DeAndre Swift take, but hey, I guess I fucking deserve it because I thought talent would win out. You thought wrong. That's like, you know what that's like, guys? We didn't even mention this. Um, Melvin Gordon cut by the Broncos. That's like if the Bills oh, sign Melvin him. Gordon tomorrow and give him all the work and not James Cook. How would you feel about that, Jeff? I mean, didn't didn't Denver do that? They signed Latavius Murray and he immediately got every carry? Yeah, like that's if the Bills do that tomorrow. <laughs> He's not really any better than Melvin Gordon. J- J- wait, what did you say? I'm sorry. L- L- Latavius Murray? Yeah. No, the, I, mean, I think Melvin Gordon's better, but like what I'm saying is like for for Jamal Williams to be getting all this work, this backup second string running back that's always been second string on a new team over a very young, dynamic, awesome running back is the same caliber as that the Bills are to bring in Melvin Gordon right now and to bury uh, James Cook after that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's so my, dumb. My point was that I don't see why they cut Melvin Gordon because. Latavius Murray isn't right. Like, and, better. Well, and here you're right. And here's another thing: Latavius Murray isn't better. And they just traded for Chase Edmonds, who went on IR today. Yeah, yeah. and was, Murray's older than uh, Melvin Gordon by a few years. He's probably, I think, uh, Gordon's 29. Murray's probably like 33. Yeah. yeah, he's like 32. Okay, so like that's a it's a lot older. But their stats are like. Pretty similar, so I don't see what they're doing. Well, the problem is Gordon's been putting the ball on the ground. That that was the big issue. Yeah. Again, it, yesterday, uh, I don't know if you saw, but he fumbled on the goal line again. Yep. 
and that's what got him waived. And and, and I get it, and that's a coach fighting for his job too, because because it's, it's not the coach's fault. A shitty coach. It, well, yeah. is it the shitty coach or, or so, is it the shitty organization? Limited. Latavius Murray is thirty two, and Melvin Gordon is twenty nine. Yeah. So they're not that far off. I mean, that's a big difference. That's three years, like in running back. For years. Running backs, yeah. In running back yeah. years. Sure. There's a meme going around. Uh, I don't know if you guys follow RG3 on Twitter, but he's fantastic. Most of the time, yes. He sometimes, but he put out a meme that was it was Melvin Gordon sitting on the bench, and he said, "Caption is." Reading some of those comments was hilarious, and one that stuck out to me was, "He's probably thinking, I should have stayed in San Diego." <laughs> Well, well, that's what I was going to ask you guys. Jay, where do you think Melvin Gordon's going to end up? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he's probably going to end up on a like a contender. I'm going with the Ravens. That's a, that's a good. That's a good spot for him for sure. Um, I think he might end up back in San Diego, LA. Or sorry, yeah, LA. Well, I don't think he'll go back to. LA. Why they 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 need a? They're they're struggling to find a backup. Didn't they just didn't they draft Isaiah Spiller? Yeah, and then they knocked him down to third string and signed Sony Michelle and Yeah, but Isaiah Spiller he backed up Eckler all game last yesterday. Right, but if they have a chance to bring Gordon back, I, I, I think they might do it. I mean I don't I think don't the know. Bills I think, usually, that, I think that ship has sailed. He he held out for don't forget. I don't think they have a soft spot in their heart for Melvin Gordon and they're just gonna be like Come here, little fella. Fine. Hey there, little fella. <laughs> I think if the Bills didn't have Hines, it could be a possibility. Well, I don't want to rule out the Bills just for the simple fact that the Bills have been interested in Melvin Gordon twice. When when Melvin Gordon was originally a free agent, I think three seasons ago, they were True. interested in him. And then they showed interest into him before he re-signed this year. Yeah, but <sighs> what do you pay no a guy you get off waivers? You only have to pay him a minimum if you only sign him for the rest of the year. That's true. But and it's prorated. There's no room. You're right. But the thing is, as we've been saying the whole year, he's the kind of back you need. He's a bigger, more durable back. Yeah, I agree. Right. But I also don't think that the, the Bills are going to look at this guy and go, yeah, we can get past his fumble issues. Well, true. But like coaches sometimes think they can change that. We've been saying we need a guy like Melvin Gordon all year. Now we're coming off a good game from James Cook and – and Devin Sigletary, so we're feeling different. You ask us this question last week, we'd be all about it. Because here's the thing. Right. I don't think they consider Naheem Hines as one of their running backs. I just think he's their, our punt returner now. <laughs> it's looking that way. So, that sucks. Yeah. And if that's the case, then why not bring in Melvin Gordon for cheap? Beat him up. He's 29. Run him into the ground. I, who knows? I'm not, I'm not asking for it. Frankly, I think he'll end up somewhere like the Jets, honestly. I didn't think about that. They lost, you know, they they lost their running back at the beginning of the year. So, did you give an answer, Jay, where you think he's going to go? I said I I do think he's going to go to a contender. And and also, here's a scary thought. Maybe not so scary. Don't be surprised if he goes to KC. I don't know. I think they're really high on Pacheco. You're gonna you're, maybe, or maybe they're gonna. I mean, they've watched Melvin Gordon their whole career. He's been in their division these entire whole career. Yeah, I, I don't doubt it. They don't do. They do that. They ran out and signed Shady McCoy. You know, the free agent. They they yeah, they always sure. bring in a free agent name. Yeah. Oh, Le'Veon Bell. That's the other one. Yeah, I mean that's always a possibility. I feel like it's the Chiefs and the Ravens always just signed free agents. <laughs> well, and and the Broncos. <laughs> Well, yeah, and the Broncos. You know what sucks and about then start them. You know what sucks about you guys not being here. We didn't get any appearance of pickles on my pickles. She's probably sad. She misses Jay. Yeah, she's just yeah, probably. She's sitting on the couch. She's not sitting on her throne. Is she, is she is she sitting where Jay normally is? No, she's on the couch. She's yeah, she's had a, she she's had a rough uh, few days because usually I'm not home this month. So she's like, "Are you ever gonna leave?" <laughs> <laughs> she's plotting your death as you speak. She is. She's like, you usually aren't sitting in my chair or laying in my bed this long. What is going on? Right. So, all right. Well, Jay, what are your big Thanksgiving plans? You got anything cool going on? No, I'm just having dinner with the family. Dinner with the family? Nice. I invited you to breakfast. Hopefully you guys can make it. 
you got yeah. Let me know ASAP. I invited Adam for breakfast too. You know, everyone does their, uh, you know, I have my family over for dinner and stuff, but I'm, I'm inviting some of my friends and family over for breakfast. So if any of my friends and family are listening to this and, uh, and want to come and get a free breakfast, uh, I do appreciate it. Hit your boy up. But Adam, be, you're going to uh, be in a different state. I'm going to be in Nashville going to visit country music superstar Eric Van Houten. And fantastic fantasy football player. And he's so good at it. Yeah. It is his, it is also his 30th birthday. Oh, that's right. The big three. So Does he want you the saying big that? Three O. He doesn't want you telling people that. What's that? That he's thirty now. Oh yeah, he does. I think he's looking forward to it. He don't look a day over thirty. What are you talking about? Yeah. No, not yet. <laughs> I told well, him to be careful on his hangovers though, because they hit differently after thirty. They most certainly do. Um, so update: uh, Christian McCaffrey still six rushing attempts. And, and Russell, Russell, oh my God, Elijah, unlimited. Elijah Mitchell has seven rushing attempts. So three quarters in, one more rushing attempt than Christian McCaffrey. But McCaffrey has a whole bunch of catches and's got like fifteen points already. So yeah, um, I really don't know how they're going to handle that backfield. But I said it last week. They're they're a committee team. That's how they run their backfield. Yes, McCaffrey is better. We all know it. But you know what? It's if, just going to be a split from here on out. But if you think about it, he's got six carries. He's got about fifteen points right now. This could help keep him healthy. True. Right. I mean, that's what you need from uh, Christian McCaffrey. All right. So, in honor of the big uh, Thanksgiving holiday, I've got a special special song picked out. Now, you might think I'd be picking out a song from the Trinity of Terror tour that I'm going to see tomorrow tonight when this comes out with Motionless and White, Ice Nine Kills, and Black Veil Brides. You would think I'd be picking a song from that, but um, but no, we are going to go with. Adam Sandler and the Thanksgiving song. <laughs> nice. So, you Good guys choice. you guys out there if you're if you're getting, you know, if you're getting unburied from the snow, like be safe, don't hurt yourself, don't have heart attacks. We've already lost like 3 people in the Buffalo area from shoveling too much. Mm-hmm. And uh we don't need that any more of that. So, um you know, enjoy your Thanksgiving. Do not talk politics at the kitchen table. Talk about the snow and talk about the bills. <laughs> don't, don't go politicking. Um, Thanksgiving game is uh, Thursday. Bills Thanksgiving game, twelve thirty. Twelve thirty, not one. Don't be silly. And uh, make sure you guys get your uh, trades, your uh, your lineup set, and um, check your trade deadline. A lot of trade deadlines ended this past week for fantasy football, but ours, I. Th- think or maybe my main league one is this upcoming week i always let it go as late as possible because why not yeah Yeah, i have one league that's most of mine are done um but i have one that's done wednesday so that's the last day you can make trades yeah so it's probably done or it's coming up this week so jay happy thanksgiving and thanks for joining us yeah no problem you too Adam, be safe on your trip and say hello to country music superstar Eric Van Houten for me. I will do that. I will send him your best. Uh, Thank you very much. (laughs) And happy Thanksgiving to you boys and both y'all families. And we will see you next time on the Fantasy Football Bros Podcast. Peace. Later, guys. They want to hit a Thanksgiving song. All right. All right. This is... uh... This is a Thanksgiving song. I hope you enjoy it. Love to eat turkey. <laughs> love to eat turkey. Oh, I love you. Love to eat turkey. Cause it's good. Love to eat turkey like a good boy should. Cause it's turkey. To eat, so good. <laughs> that clapping's messing my head up, man. <laughs> I appreciate it, but I was, was trying to think of the next line. I'm like, all I hear is clapping. <laughs> Here we go. Thanks, anyways. <laughs> Turkey for me. <laughs> 
turkey for you. Let's eat the turkey in my big brown shoe. Love to eat the turkey at the table. I once saw a movie with Betty Grable. Eat that turkey all night long. 50 million Elvis fans can't be wrong. Turkey lurky do and turkey lurky dap. I eat that turkey, then I take a nap. <laughs> Thanksgiving <laughs> is a special night. <laughs> Jimmy Walker used to say, Dino my. That's right. Turkey with gravy and cranberry. Can't believe the Mets traded that old strawberry. <laughs> turkey for you and turkey for me. Can't believe Tyson gave that girl VD. <laughs> oh, white meat, dark meat, you just can't lose. I fell off my moped and I got a bruise. <laughs> Turkey in the oven and the buns in the toaster. I'll never take down my Cheryl Teague's poster. <laughs> Wrap the turkey up in aluminum foil. My brother likes to masturbate with baby oil. <laughs> turkey and sweet potato pie. Sammy Davis Jr. only had one eye. Oh, turkey for the girls and turkey for the boys. My favorite kind of pants are corduroys. Gobble, gobble, goo, and gobble, gobble, giggle. I wish turkey only cost a nickel. Oh, I love turkey on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Oh. Thank you. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.